going to start off with uh, Mike Trudell. Hey, LeBron, Mike Trudell from LA. Just wonder what were you looking to get accomplished tonight, uh, not individually, but as a team? What was the focus and, and how did you feel like the team and, and your teammates responded? Um, well, first of all, um, you know, I want to continue to shed light on, uh, you know, justice for Breonna Taylor and, uh, and, and to her family and everything that's going on uh, with that situation. Um, to answer your question, um, we want to just try to get better. Uh, we use this moment as a training camp to continue to implement our, our identity. Our identity is to defend, share the ball, push the tempo, and play together. So um, I think we was able to accomplish that. So as close as 40 minutes as possible. Dave? Hey, LeBron, David Benjamin. We're used to seeing you write BBZ or Savannah or Gloria or Strive for Greatness on your sneakers. Obviously, you had the Brianna Taylor message today. Um, I'd just like to ask you about putting the message on your sneaker. Then also, what would you like to see the next step occur in terms of getting justice for her family? Uh, well, we want the cops arrested who committed that crime. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, in the state of uh, Kentucky, uh, what's going down there, I know a lot of people is feeling the same. And uh, us as the NBA and us as the players, me as one of the leaders of this league, uh, I want her family to know, and I want the state of Kentucky to know um, that we feel for it and we want justice. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And this is a, uh, this is a wrong situation that's going on in my eyes and, and it's in a, lot of, a lot of other eyes not only here in America, but I've been in the world as well. Tanya? Um, it feels hard to transition to, but the, the atmosphere that you guys had tonight, and you guys were so animated and, and uh, loud and you know very into it, despite having no crowd here. Um, can you just take us through what that was like and, and if it mattered to you guys? Well, um, the same energy that we have on the floor is the same energy that we have towards having justice for Breonna Taylor and her family. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the energy that we bring to the game. And that's just who we are. That's, uh, we got a close-knit group. Uh, we have a lot of togetherness, a lot of brotherhood um, with this franchise. And uh, we care for one another, not only on the floor, but off the floor as well. So you got to create your own energy here. We understand that there's no fans. Um, our wonderful fans is watching this game on the TVs, on the, you know, laptops, phones, iPads, whatever the case may be. So, you know, it's about us creating our own energy, continue to make a, you know, you know, you know understanding, you know, what we're here for and that's to, to get better. So um, you know, that's what it's all about. Kyle Good. Uh, Ron, you were talking about Brianna Taylor. A lot of players here are talking about Brianna Taylor and also kind of look up to you as um, a leader in, in social change. What does it mean to kind of see um, you know, a lot of people following a path that you kind of blazed, starting with Trayvon Martin, and, and now we're here. Um, it's just who I've been for quite a while now. Um, never afraid to speak about, you know, things that I was uh, knowledgeable about, um, that I had um, insight on, and, and I was, you know, up to speed on. Um, you know, and with the Trayvon Martin case that obviously years ago, uh, with that situation, I spoke about I spoke about that that situation um, with the George Floyd incident that that happened not too long ago. Um, you know that that's a, a horrible uh, incident, and also obviously the Breonna Taylor um, situation. Um, you know, and it's it's unfortunate that you know it's, it was fortunate that we had the George the George Floyd video to see it. I mean, is that what we need to see a, a video of Breonna being killed? for people to realize how um, how bad the situation is. Um, I don't even believe they was at the right place, right? Cops wasn't even at the right place. They just knocked down the wrong door and started doing what they do at that point in time. And that's just shooting away. And that's just, that's just not okay. Um, so I never, like I said, I never shied away from being who I am and speak about things that not only affects me, that hit home for me, but also affect my community and affect black people because um, we've been going through it a lot. I've seen a video today of a black man inside like a Walmart or, or a Target or whatever trying to buy a bike for his son. And the cops was called on him. He had a receipt and everything. And the cops was called on him. They arrested him inside the store and took him outside. And he, I mean, it's just heartbreaking, man. You, you guys don't understand. 
unless you <laughs> unless you're a person of color you guys don't understand i understand that you might feel feel for us but you can never really uh, truly understand what it is to be black uh in america so um but once again you know that's what it's about dan wokey Hey, LeBron. Um, along those lines, Kyle mentioned that that Trayvon Martin photo. You, you, that, that's eight years ago. Today, you played an NBA game on a court that says Black Lives Matter. Could you have imagined that that movement, which kind of was spawned out of that Trayvon Martin tragedy, that it would reach this level where there will be months of basketball played with that everywhere that people look? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I love the game. Um, I love the NBA. I love what we've built. Um, not only here in America, but all over the world. Um, I think this is the most precious, beautiful, impactful game in the world. Um, but a lot of people kind of use this analogy talking about Black Lives Matter as a movement. It's not a, it's not a movement. When you're Black, it's not a movement. It's, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> we, we, we sit here and say it's a movement, and okay, how long is this movement going to last? Don't stop the movement. No, this is a walk of life. When you wake up and you're Black, you, that is what it is. It's not, it shouldn't be a movement. It should be a lifestyle. This is who we are. And we understand that and we know that, you know, for for one step that someone else might have to take or, or for one yard someone else may have to take, that we know we got to take five more steps and we know we got to take 10 more yards to get to the to the end zone. I mean, we understand that. We know that. So but also what makes us, uh, I mean, it's strong, uh, makes us it's powerful, it makes us so uh, unique and unified is that we have so much hardships in our life, either from personal experiences or, or loved ones or reading history or seeing videos, Rodney King, uh, you know, or, or just just being a part of just the communities that you in where you just racially profiled from the time you come out of the womb. So, um, you know, it's just, it's not a movement. I hate to, I don't want to hear, I don't like the word movement um, because unfortunately in America and society, there ain't been no damn movement for us. There ain't been no movement. Hey, LeBron, you've been fighting for social justice for a long time now. Do you feel like this is a unique opportunity um, being in the bubble uh, with this being a top of a conversation to really affect change right now? For me personally, or you think for, for our league? For society as a whole, for you and for other players to be able to influence change. Um, I don't know, Melissa. I mean, I've, I do not uh i mean i don't go wake up and say okay i'm let's use the bubble as an opportunity to speak about us as a as as, as people of color it's just it's just what i am it's who i am it's what i stand for you know i got three you know black kids at home i got a my black wife is at home my mother is black coming from a single parent household i'm the only child um so <clears throat> excuse my uh excuse me but no nah, i i don't I don't have I didn't need this bubble to, to, to speak about what I'm about. That's who I am. Um, but I think the greatest thing that could come out of this is guys um, in this bubble, guys that may not or may be scared at points in time to speak about things that because they feel like it may affect um, how people view them um, or, or affect a certain situation. They say, OK, well, you know, I'm not LeBron. I don't have the. I, I can't do that. That's not you know, he can he can go up there and say that it might affect, you know, something going on in my livelihood. But um, you know, this opportunity has given guys to really, truly um, just be like, OK, it's not because it's a um, it's a it's a time where we are being are being heard. Um, either if you really care or not, we're being heard. And uh, that's what's most important. Last two questions, Joe. Hey, think that, like just the time in Cleveland, you know, sitting up against the wall, talking about Ferguson, wearing the I can't breathe T-shirt. The speech at the SBs, all the way to now. If you if you would have told the 2016 LeBron what is happening now, would you say that was progress? Or what would you say? What do you think you would say it was? Well, I'll say it's progress for American America. The the, the the attention, sort of the the kind of nationwide being fed up with what has happened. Like what just um, what do you think you would say? Uh, I mean, I would say a lot. Um, I mean, in, in 2016, uh, Barack was our president. We know what's going on now. So is that is that progress? I don't think I think we all can say and say that's not progress. Um, the conversations that's being had right now, and how many people are really listening, um, or, or or just having the conversation of trying to make things happen, 
I think that's progress, but just got, we got a long way to go. Uh, we got a long way to go. And until, um, you know, it, it's crazy because you look at um, just like common sense, you know, everyone knows what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Like you just know that. I mean, you don't have to be, you don't have to like black people or you don't have to care about what I talk about or care what we're here all about or care if black lives matters on the court. But you know what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. There's not one human being that does not know that. I mean, if you're a little kid and someone comes, you know, you outside and it's recess and a kid takes your, your juice box, that kid know that was wrong. It's just, it, no matter if you care or not, you know that's wrong. Why did you do that? You know it's wrong. So. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of shy away from that. Um, but until we just like, that's like one small piece of it, but it's a very intricate piece of it.